All right, guys, part two of our uh, Panama City Beach condo market update. This is going to be a good overview of the, what's happening in the entire market. This is focusing on the month of November 2020. Um, like they say, if you play around in the stock market, you know, you don't fight the Fed. It's important to know what's happening in the overall condo market, of course, um, before understanding what happens in any particular building. So let's look at what's happening uh, across the board. Remember, at the beginning of the pandemic, this was a chart that I started to track uh, to see, to assess the level of showing activity that was in the market. This, what you're looking at here comes from a company called Showing Time. And Showing Time is a system, software system that uh, real estate agents and brokers use to schedule showing appointments, like it sounds. And we knew early on that the orange line, this is 2020, we knew early March that we would see a dramatic fall off on people getting out to look at real estate, to show real estate. Uh, I wanted to start tracking this because I knew at some point we would have to bottom out. So it would be important to know when, because if we did get to a bottom, then maybe we could figure out when we were start going in the other direction. That would be an early sign of the market picking up. Um, I think we were all a little surprised to see by mid May or so, we were showing as much real estate in Florida as we were in 2019. And in fact, if you track this, it gets very, very interesting. We really, except for um, an anomaly here in 2019, maybe it was a storm or something that year, we really showed about as much real estate in 2020 as we did in 2019. And if you look really carefully, we're actually outperforming it for a good stretch here from September to October. So. You know, if we're thinking about what that means for the market, the market by mid-May, we picked up and we're showing as much real estate as we were last year. It's the very beginning. So now the next thing to assess would be, okay, how are people getting out because they're sick of being inside or are they actually getting out and writing contracts? And so one of the one of the metrics that we track is this new number of new contracts being written. So check out what happens still in November. 95% more New contracts were written on condos in Panama City Beach the first week of November, when 95% more than the same week in the year 2019. 161% more new contracts written the second week of November. 121% more new contracts written um, in the third week of November, and 91% more new contracts written in the fourth week. Now think about what that means for a second. If we're showing about the same amount of of condos, you would think we it would it wouldn't be unreasonable to think that we were writing the same amount, a similar amount of new contracts. So if we saw plus six percent, minus four percent, plus twelve percent, minus three percent like that, it wouldn't be terribly surprising. But we're seeing these astronomical numbers. It's not just think about a company year over year. If we grew ten percent as a company, some companies would be extremely thrilled with that. We're writing 69, 84, 121%, 162% more every week we're writing this many con uh, new contracts. And if you looked at the chart going all the way back to mid-May, the numbers have consistently been um, very dramatic like that. Uh, another way to look at supply and demand in the market is to take that number of new contracts that are being written, the demand, and also look at the number of new listings that are coming up for sale this year. And the red line represents that supply number. The blue line is the demand. Blue line, new contracts, red line, supply. And again, since middle end of May, look at this. The demand, the number of new contracts being written, has outpaced the number of sellers coming to the market every single week. It doesn't cross over one time. It might get close there, maybe again there. But we're consistently, every week, week in and week out, and this is going back to May, we're buying more condos, we're writing more new contracts on condos than people are putting up condos for sale. That's how extreme this market is. One last chart to look at, and we'll jump into the individual buildings. Remember this chart. I love this one. The red line, this, this is representative of the entire Gulffront condo market just in the newer buildings in PCB. The red line represents the number of um, uh, condos for sale at any given point. The black line represents the number of actual closings, actual sales. So take a look at, oh, and so 
the one big takeaway here is this months of inventory number. You hear me talk about this a lot. Five or six months of inventory traditionally meant a neutral market in real estate. Theoretically, if someone decided to sell their condo, it would take 30 days to put it in the paper, to run a magazine ad. This is old school. Um, go three months, four months, three months with the marketing out there advertising the property and then maybe another 30 or 45 days after you've negotiated a contract to close. That entire process would take five or six months and traditionally in real estate that meant a neutral market. Um, anything under five months, that means things are happening faster, units are selling faster, there's more demand for units, that's when you, you start to hear about all of the things that typically go along with the seller's market. Um, multiple offer situations, units selling very quickly. If um, we stay in, in seller's market territory for an extended period of time, that's where you start to see some appreciation, those kind of things. So look at what we what's happened in the condo market. Right here is April, May. That's the beginning of the pandemic. And obviously we slowed down to nine months, seven months of inventory for those two months just because of the of a little bit of sluggishness and activity after what had been a very healthy condo market. Look at where it's picked up to. June 3.34, July 2.75, August 2.78, September 2.12. We're down to 1.84 months of inventory in November. I mean, we're still speeding up. This market still has momentum. Even in November, um, under two months of inventory is a scalding hot market. Uh, you have to be careful with pricing in this market. In fact, you can price a unit too low and it sells too fast because there was so much demand that your your messaging didn't even get out to everybody. So a couple of things to keep in mind before we go into the individual buildings. Um, it's a very hot market. There's a lot of demand. Um, if you're thinking about selling and maybe you've gotten through this rental season you're going to enjoy the holidays and think about selling next year right at the beginning of the season, beginning of beach season. Keep in mind a few things. The things I, the, the, the numbers I just showed you, we're in the middle of a very busy hot market still. It's December 8th when I'm recording this, and it's still very busy. We're writing, we're negotiating contracts. When a listing does come up, it's getting activity very, very quickly. Um, that's the market we're in. If you're selling right now and you're thinking about selling, you don't have a lot of competition. This is with all these, um, the numbers I've shown you, this is the market that you can test your price a little higher. You don't have a lot of competitors and, and it's a really good time to think about being on the market. Experienced buyers, especially buyers that are looking for some kind of vacation rental revenue, they want a closing by January or February at the latest so that they can start their season. So they're, they're shopping now if they haven't already made a purchase. And keep in mind too, the potential for, we have the potential for some pretty big economic change um, over the next 30, 45 days. There could be some major shifts in national economic policy. Um, and if that happens, that could trickle down all through um, you know, over into the stock market, which could trickle into how people feel about their 401ks and maybe we, may, maybe we don't make an investment right now. Um, a very distinct possibility that come March, April, when so many people think about putting their units up for sale, you're adding um, competition and we might be in a different economic environment. Um, we don't see anything in the condo market at this point that, that has it stopping. Um, but if, if there are things, big picture things nationally, economically, uh, that could affect all of it. Um, maybe things change, but so far, the point of what I'm trying to show you here, we're in an extremely active market. This is the kind of market, if you are selling a unit, excuse me, where you price the market, you, you test the market high. And in fact, you test the market even higher than where things have been selling. Where things have been selling is the market. Um, you probably would get activity very quickly. You have to price the, 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 the unit up. Um, it needs time just to get out so people um, can get the message and think about it. I uh, hope you guys found that helpful. Getting ready to record part three. We're going to go through all these buildings so you can see what that little chart looks like in each one of these condo projects and also talk about specific pricing for those buildings.